Hey, what is going on guys? It's Modern Dwarf here. Welcome back to another PS5 jailbreak news update. Got a pretty big update here in this video. Quite a few things have been happen happening recently, even since my last update, which was obviously the big one about the potential kernel exploit from the flow. So if you haven't checked out that news update, definitely check that one out because that's some pretty major news. But in that video, I did also mention about the porting script that was updated by Slayer's Govi which allows you to get more offsets for porting the K-Stuff payload, the PS4 fake package enabler, which is what we use to run our PS4 game backups and our PS5 game backups through items flow, uh, is using that payload. And previously it only supported 4.03, 4.50 and 4.51. So the big difference now is that that porting script was completed just a couple of days ago by Slayer's Govi. And the result of that is that we're now getting support for these other firmwares. So Right now, there's a bunch of firmwares that have already been added. So we've got support for firmware 3.0. We have support for 3.10, 3.20, 3.21, and 4.0 is being worked on. And 4.02 is the only one we really don't have at the moment. So if there's anybody on 4.02 that you know knows how to get the jailbreak up and running on the PS5 and is able to at least run a payload, a test payload, uh, then you know you could get you could help get support for that firmware too. And we could have support for all the available jailbreakable firmwares now from 3.x all the way up to 4.51. So 3.0 all the way to 4.51, we'll pretty much have support any day now. So we already have support for all these firmwares. We're just waiting on 4.0 and 4.02, and then we'll have support for all of them. So now everybody on a jailbreakable PS5 will be able to use the fake package enabler, run PS4 fake packages, and be able to run PS5 game dumps through items flow as well. It was kind of an awkward time to have like, you know, only 4.03, 4.50 and 4.51 having these extra features that, you know, these other firmwares that were also jailbreakable did not have access to. At least we're all pretty much on the same page now, which is great. So as a result of this, there's been a new update for ETA Hen and for Items Flow. So Lightning Mods yesterday released a new build of ETA Hen version 1.3b. So there's some update notes here. We've got K stuff for 3.xx added. So 3.0 was tested and working. Um, I believe 3.20 was tested as well and appears to be working, but it should support all of the 3.xx firmwares. It's just not all of them have been tested before release. So if you're on one of these firmwares, you can try uh, ETA Hen, make sure everything's working. So it supports browser caching and no longer requires a network to be connected. And all IPC inter-process communication commands have been rewritten to not use the network. So this is a pretty big uh, thing that a lot of people were uh, quite upset about when ETA Hen 1.2b released with Items Flow. The problem was that if you were not connected to the internet, you had no network connection whatsoever on your PS5 because you're trying to you know, prevent updates, then Items Flow would not work. It would just give you a black screen when you launched it because the way that Items Flow and ETA Hen communicated was through the network, through the local network on the PS5. But that's all been rewritten. The code for that has been rewritten so that now they communicate differently, uh, essentially uh, through like the process ID is used instead of having to, you know, go through the network. So therefore, we now do not need a network connection in order to use items flow with ETA Hen. You can turn off the internet completely on the PS5. You can use a offline cache to access the exploit and then you'll be able to still use items flow while being offline so that is a great option that has now been added and we also have an opt-in option in eta hen config to auto launch items flow so in the data folder in the eta hen folder and then config.ini you can access that through ftp and if you go in there there is a config.ini file now this has existed since 1.2b and inside the config.ini file, you've been able to do things like turn off the FTP server or PS5 debug. If you don't want those enabled, you can turn them off in the INI file. And then the next time you load uh, the payload, it will not launch the FTP server or the PS5 debug, depending on which ones you enable. But now there's also been an option added here to auto launch items flow. If you enable that option, it's not enabled by default, but if you enable that option in the config.ini file, then when you next launch ETA Hen, it will automatically launch you into items flow. Now, personally, I wouldn't really use this feature because I mean, is it really that hard to just go over and launch items flow from the home menu? And also a lot of the, a lot of the times that I'm launching ETA Hen, I'm not necessarily using items flow. This is more for people who want to use items flow to kind of replace the normal 
uh, XMB, where you pretty much just use items flow as your main launcher for your games and stuff. So that's for people who kind of want to use items flow like that. You can enable this feature so it automatically launches it as soon as you run the payload. We also have added support for resuming apps and games from rest mode. This is something that wasn't working previously. So you can now put your console into rest mode and recover from rest mode and ETA hen and everything should still work and resuming your games. Also improved K-Log server. So improved the kernel log server. So you can run it with Netcat using the PS5's IP and port 9081. Or you can use PuTTY, like I would normally use PuTTY and Telnet on port 9081 to get the, the debug log, the kernel log. So that's now available as well. Now, in addition to that, we also have a complementary release of Items Flow to go along with this. So a new build of Items Flow has been updated to version 1.04. It adds support for firmware 3.xx, of course. So people on 3.xx firmwares can now access Items Flow, can now use it, run their game backups. It's also fixed an issue where changing directory would never go away. That's one bug I did hear quite a few people mention that when they selected uh, the game dump folder uh, in the PS5 app section, it would get stuck sometimes on changing directory and would never finish. So that's been fixed. Also, Items Flow will now install the KStuff database triggers only for 3.xx on launch. So this is something that would cause out of memory errors, I think on 3.xx, but is beneficial for people on 4.xx firmwares. It's just a difference between, the, I think, the way the database works with 4.xx firmwares versus 3.xx firmwares. So now it's basically optimized so that people on 4.xx firmwares can still benefit from it, but people on 3.xx firmwares, it will only happen on launch so that you don't get out of memory errors on 3.xx firmwares. Another big one is that the Items Flow PS5 app database has been moved to data items flow PS5 underscore apps database from the app folder. So previously the database was on the app folder for the, the actual application. So for items flow, it was in user app and then item 0001. And the problem with that is that you would lose your virtual apps when you reinstalled the application. So if you deleted items flow and reinstalled it, it would get rid of that database file when you deleted it and then reinstalling it would recreate the database again, a, a blank version basically. So you would lose your virtual apps. So that was one issue. Whereas with this, if it's in the data folder, it's kind of separated from all of the apps. So no matter how much you reinstall anything, it's not going to affect the database. The database will stay there, which is what you want. So that is handy that it's now been moved to a kind of better location for that database to be. However, what's important now is that if you don't want to lose your virtual apps when you install this new version of Items Flow, you'll need to connect through FTP and go to the user app item 0001 folder before you uninstall the old items flow application. You'll need to go to that location and copy the database file that's in there to the data folder to data forward slash items flow. If that location doesn't exist, create it in the data folder and copy the app file in there. I'll be showing on screen exactly how to do that right here. And then that way, once you've copied that database file from the app folder to the data folder, you can then delete items flow version 1.03 and then install the new builds 1.04 and your virtual apps should remain. Also, he's rewritten all IPC commands to be networkless, which again, just harpers back to the same thing from ETA hen 1.3b. So it does not require a network connection. Also fixed an issue where installing packages from the data folder would give an error. So yes, you can use the package installer that's built into items flow to install package files, not just from a USB, but from any location on the hard drive, usually the data folder is where you would put them, where you could where you can write the package files to the data folder. So if you wanted to do remote package installing, one way you can do it is just to use FTP to copy package files to the data folder and then use the package installer in items flow, select that package file in the data folder and install it. Previously, that would cause an error, but now they can be installed. So that works now. Also a word on the PS5 compatibility list, it's only games that can work up to firmware 5.0. Uh, there are some people who seem to not know this. I thought I've been pretty clear about this in the past, but I just wanted to reaffirm this so that people realize so that there's not any confusion, is that essentially the games that we can run right now, the PS5 game dumps, are only game dumps that work up to the release of pretty much 5.0. So any games that are runnable on 4.51, up until the release of when 5.0 came out and then we started getting new games 
that required, you know, a higher SDK version. At that point, you can't run any of those games because those require a new game update that requires a higher firmware for you to be on in order to install and run these games. Now, the reason why we can play PS4 fake packages that work up to the latest game releases like Assassin's Creed Mirage can be played on the PS5. The reason why that's possible is because CYB1K, the person who creates the bat ports, he has access to keys that are able to decrypt those games, which we don't have access to on the PS5 for PS5 games. So PS5 games are limited. We can only run game backups that are playable on the firmwares that we have jailbreaks for, which is 4.51 is the highest. So any games that came out when 4.51 was released up to when 5.0 was released. So it pretty much stops around April 2022. So any games that came out from April 2022 and earlier are games that we can dump and we can try and run uh, on items flow on our jailbroken PS5s. But any games that came out after that date are not going to be playable unless we get access to the decryption keys necessary to decrypt those games, which we don't have access to right now. So that's the situation we're in right now. So this is why when we're talking about backports, we're talking about backporting games that will run on say 4.51, but will not run on 3.0 because 3.0 is too old of a firmware. We could backport that game because we can dump it. Somebody on 4.51 can dump it on their console and then we could backport it to run on 3.0 so people on those firmwares can access those newer games. That's what we're talking about. You cannot run or backport games that require higher firmwares than whatever the highest uh, jailbreakable firmware is at the time, which right now is 4.51. So that's the situation we're in right now. It even goes to game updates as well because there are game updates that you can run uh, on 4.51 that are too high to run on 3.0 and those could be backported so that people on 3.0 could run those higher game updates. Even on 4.03, there are some game updates that are runnable on 4.51 that are not on 4.03. Those don't require as much backporting because 4.3 and 4.51 are similar enough uh, that it doesn't require much. Sometimes just changing the SDK version or whatever will fix it, but, but the 3.x firmwares compared to 4.x firmwares are quite a bit different and require a lot more work backporting games so it will take a while before a lot of these games that re normally require higher firmwares than 3.0 are actually then runnable on 3.0 once they get backported so it'll take a little bit of time for those to get backported to work on those older firmwares so anyway that's it for this update hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful if you did please leave a like and subscribe and once again i'll hopefully see you guys in the next video